Live from Atlanta. No, we ain't gonna talk about none of that Super Bowl bullshit tonight. We're not gonna be talking. We're not gonna be talking about that. What's up, everybody? This is Curtis. Hope everyone's doing well. It's enjoying their Sunday. You know, I've been relaxing and so wanted to do a little Facebook Live. I haven't done one in a while, so I figured I would do one here. Um, I am in the city. I am in the city of Atlanta. I'm not that far away from the dome. Um, so, and they're having all those Super Bowl festivities. But you know, I want to talk about tonight briefly. The NFL going to be talking about the city of Atlanta and some of the hidden history of the city of Atlanta. You know, because you know, one thing about these spectacles. They, they really tend to piss me off, honestly, because, you know, with spectacle comes propaganda, you know, and I've been seeing all these articles and, and slogans and videos. Oh, Atlanta, too busy to hate and civil rights and we changed the world and all sorts of bullshit. So we're, we're going to talk tonight. We're going to have a real discussion. So, you know, for those of you who will not be partaking in the Super Bowl, we're going to have a little discussion and I'm just going to talk to you and uh, we're going to have some fun and please feel free to post your comments uh, or if you have specific questions, uh, sound, sound person, do I sound good? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to have a nice little discussion tonight. So first thing that you should know, is that the NFL is completely and totally rigged. I know a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people, Saints fans, are really pissed off. Like, oh my God, you know, the NFL blew it. No, they didn't blow it. The NFL is rigged. It's rigged for ratings. And truth be told, the reason why they're having the Super Bowl in Atlanta is because Atlanta actually built a brand new stadium for them. Sound person? Am I? Freezing? Let's see. Maybe I'm freezing. Good? No? Everyone see me? Please post a comment. Let me know if, if you can see me and hear me well. This is a test, so I really haven't done this in a while. Excuse me, a little technical difficulties, little technical difficulties, but we're going to get it together. Okay, so first thing you all should know is that the NFL is completely rigged. It's controlled by organized gambling and it's controlled by the league for ratings. There is a reason why the New England Patriots have been winners for so fucking long. And, you know, ever since 9-11, they've gone to the Super Bowl. You know, have, have any of you ever thought about that? You know, why is it right after 9-11, right after America got attacked and by the American government? Yeah, it wasn't by Al-Qaeda, it was by the American government. Why, you know, the Patriots, because you know, Patriots, you know, they weren't like the Cowboys or some of these other teams that, you know, historically had really good teams like the 49ers, the Cowboys, etc. So what gives with the Patriots? Well, it's a nice little storyline for the American elites to push after the age of 9-11 and America's ongoing wars on terror, wars on ISIS, wars on Al-Qaeda, wars on, on, on the entire fucking world. Because 9-11 really was, it was a, a pretext and a justification for America to just completely just reassert itself, if you will, you know, kind of, you know, put down, show some of that good old American exceptionalism, you know, and show, hey, you know, even though, you know, there ain't no more, there really is no more enemies for us to fight, we still gonna be fighting the rest of y'all motherfuckers. We, you know, we, we ain't gonna stop. Nah, that's not, that's not gonna happen. We still gonna be bombing, you know, even though Russia's gone and there's really no other world power for us to, for us to fear monger about, 
we still need to, uh, you know, because um, that's the basis of our economy. If we ain't dropping no bombs, then we ain't making no money. So we got to drop bombs on somebody. You know, fuck you think this is? You think this is a free market? You think this is freedom? Fuck no. This ain't no freedom. And America's not free. So, you know, the reason why the Patriots have won over the past several years is because this has to do with, you know, of encouraging Americans to be patriotic. You know, you know, love your country. So, you know, the Patriots, you know, they cheated. You know, I think they had the whole tuck rule uh, when they played against the Raiders several years ago, I think in 2001 where, you know, Brady actually blatantly fumbled the ball, but the NFL, you know, in order to fit their storyline, um, came from the Raiders. And people talk about, you know, how the, you know, the, the call against the, uh, the call against the, excuse me, the Saints and the Rams two weeks ago was probably the worst call ever. That was even far worse because they actually had a chance to review that call. You know, the Saints call and the, the Saints and the Rams call you know, the NFL, you know, you know, it's obvious that they intentionally missed out on that call. The NFL has some plausible denial in saying that, oh, well, you know, it happened so fast, we didn't see it. But in the case of the tuck rule, you know, which which allowed Tom Brady to go to the to, to the championship game, to the Super Bowl, you know, they actually reviewed that play. It was actually under review, you know, so they actually spent almost a goddamn minute re- re- reviewing the goddamn play. And they still decided that, you know, it was an incomplete pass. It wasn't a fumble, even though it was clearly a damn fumble. So that's the reason why the Patriots, the Patriots are not that damn good. They know how to cheat. And the NFL wants them to win, you know, because NFL, you know, is a part of the, the, the football NFL are the entertainment arm of the military industrial complex. I'll say that again. Football and the NFL is the entertainment arm of the military industrial complex. So that's why, you know, they have all these jet flyovers and the national anthem. All this is about, you know, encouraging Americans, number one, to support the empire, number two, to support war, and number three, for military recruitment. Because a long time ago, they didn't have, you know, long, almost within the past, maybe 60 or 70 years, they didn't have a national anthem. But this only started after World War II. I think it was after World War II and World War I. You know, when the ruling elite decided, well, hey, you know, how can we, you know, how can we encourage more Americans to support war? Because, you know, traditionally, traditionally speaking, Americans oftentimes aren't as gung-ho to invade other countries for, you know, rich white men. You know, they're, they're not gung-ho to go after Iraq, you know, because like, yo, what the, what the fuck Saddam Hussein ever do to me? They just don't see the connection. But, you know, three, via propaganda, i.e. incorporating the national anthem into sporting events, more and more Americans, you know, start to profess their love for their country and thus uh, love for everything their country does. You know, you know, America could bomb, you know, they could be bombing babies. You know, hey, Americans will love it, which they, you know, America does bomb babies. America will love it because of the propaganda, such as the national anthem. So... You know, it's important to realize that, that the NFL is here to promote the military industrial complex. I remember a long time ago, um, um, George Carlin, he was talking about how, you know, NFL, you know, how, you know, uh, football is very much like war. You know, you have a quarterback and he's, you know, he has an aerial assault and, you know, and he guns the ball into the end zone and he threw a, he threw a bullet or he threw a dagger you know, and he marches down the field, you know, it's, he's a lot of this military, uh, you know, a lot of this military language to describe, you know, when the offense, you know, when the offense is going down the field. And it's very much, you know, it was, it was a funny little skit that he did uh, several years back. And it's very much true. And the NFL is very much, um, you know, a part of the military, you know, so that's why, you know, you know, the NFL, you know, it was it was a business decision for them. You know, of course, it was definitely about racism, uh, but it was the business decision. It's like, hey, if I'm, you know, if, if, if this is the entertainment arm of the military industrial complex, then, you know, someone taking a knee, that's fucking up our, that's fucking up our show. You know, it's, we, we can't have that. You know, it's, it's messing up. It's almost like, you know, you go into a graduation and people get on the, get on the stage with a diploma and they want to start, you know, taking off their clothes or some shit like that. You know, it, it's going to fuck up the show. 
and the NFL is a form of entertainment. It's not real. If you look it up, you go on how they're registered with the federal government. The NFL is registered as an entertainment company, not a sporting company, an entertainment company. So the NFL and all these little gaming events are about as real as the goddamn WWE. They're fake. It's fake. You know, fake news. You know, we live in a world of fake sports. You know, which thought, you know, everything else in our country is real. And somehow the sporting events, you know, everything in this country is fake. Elections are fake. Politics is fake. Money is fake. Titties are fake. Fake booties. Fake pecs. Fake hair. Fake everything. I mean, goddamn. I mean, you know, real is is object is is objective. Like is subjective reality these days. Every fucking thing is fake. So in a world of complete and absolute fakeness, you know, somehow sports is supposed to be real. It's supposed to be pure. I don't think so. It's rigged. It's rigged by the league for ratings. It's rigged by the league for storylines. It's also rigged for stadiums. So the reason why Atlanta is has the privilege of spending billions of dollars to host the Super Bowl, even though they're going to gain maybe you know they're not, they're only going to gain like two hundred million two hundred million dollars back, you know, because the city spent about mm, close to about a billion. Um, but you know they're not going to make any money. I can make any money off. You know, most cities actually lose money when they have the Super Bowl. So for Atlanta to have the privilege of having the Super Bowl, um, they had to spend close to about a billion dollars. But they're only going to make the city is going to be only going to make about two hundred million dollars. You know, but they had to spend I mean close to about a billion between the stadium and between security. But um, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, sorry Falcons fans, you know, well. You shouldn't care anyway, because again, all this is rigged. So what I'm telling you should surprise you. But the Falcons made the Super Bowl about two years ago, you know. And the Falcons, you know, you know, again, no offense, y'all. The Falcons have always been garbage. They, they've been garbage. They're just they've never had a good team. They have always been garbage. They've always been a sucky team, just like you know the Cleveland Browns. You know, they've always been quite shitty, uh, pun intended. So you know, the Falcons out of nowhere make a goddamn Super Bowl, you know. And I'm like, okay, this may. <laughs> You know, they're beating the Saints, and you know, I'm like, okay, this makes zero sense. But they made a Super Bowl, and you know, I start doing, you know, I call them researcher, and I'm like, okay, this is rigged. So what's going on here? So they make this, they make a Super Bowl, and then you know, and I remember, you know, okay, you know, they're, they're actually building a stadium. You know, it was, it was actually almost done. Um, so right when the Falcons were about into about to move into the new stadium, you know, um, well, when they made the Super Bowl is when the new stadium was being built. So the reality is, is that NFL actually, you know, the NFL gave the Falcons a Super Bowl appearance in order to justify this monstrosity known as the Mercedes, the Mercedes Super, the, the Mercedes uh, Stadium, whatever, super, whatever it's called, the, the, the Mercedes Dome. So, and that, and that's, a, and that's the same trend that's going on with the Rams. The Rams are, are they're about to spend the most amount of money ever. On, they're about to spend close to about almost $14 billion. I mean, I think the Falcon Stadium was only close to about $4 billion. They're about to spend close to about $14 billion on a goddamn stadium. So the NFL made sure that the Rams got a Super Bowl appearance. So it's the exact same. And, and if you actually look at the data, the teams that make that have a Super Bowl appearance, usually within about a year, or the following year, they are going to move into a new stadium. So the NFL rigs the sporting events for them in order to justify, you know, all the all the all the taxpayer expense on these new stadiums. Because keep in mind, you know, these stadiums are it's a form of it's a massive form of corporate welfare. You know, the NFL, if the NFL did not receive any money from the government, the NFL would not exist anymore. Think about that for a minute. The NFL would would actually go broke and would be bankrupt if it were not for the billions of dollars of welfare that they receive from the state, local, and federal government. So, okay, all right, Curtis. You know, so you tell me, Curtis, that um, the NFL is actually like it's kind of like it, it, it's the government. The government sponsors and subsidizes and finances this shit. Yes, they do. In case, you know, if I if I can jog you off memory, Donald Trump, the psychopath, 
in chief, the orange psychopath in chief. The orange psychopath in chief said that, you know, if, you know, if, if those son of a bitches don't stand for our anthem, you know, even though, you know, I, I never forget during the Republican debates, Donald Trump, he, he wasn't saluting the anthem. He was just standing there. He, he, was, he would just look at the, oh, 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 oh I hear some jets. Uh oh, you, oh, oh, I hear the jets. Oh, yeah. You know, see, you know, I'm hearing jets in the background, y'all. I'm, I'm from, live from Atlanta, y'all. They have jets. The U.S. military, they must have just sung the national anthem. I'm sorry, you know, the, the slave anthem, you know, where they celebrate slavery and war and genocide. Um, you know, they had the military fly over. So, you know, a lot, a lot of folks going to die from all the noise pollution and from all the air pollution, you know, that our, that our military is going to generate from doing that, you know, from doing that flyover, which actually started under um, George H.W. Bush. You know, that, that's when, they, you know, the, US, the United States military really, okay, yeah, we're really going, we're going to start using this Super Bowl to promote the military. You know, because remember, George Bush was actually, you know, and they did that intentionally because George Bush had invaded Iraq the first time. So he realized that, okay, you know, and that was kind of like an unpopular war. You know, there was a lot of like, you know, a lot of bullshit going on. And they were saying that, that, that you know, Iraq had invaded Kuwait and they're about to invade America's ally um, or America's oil producer, Saudi Arabia. And they said, oh, you know, Iraq has, has, has troops upon the Saudi border. And, you know, they had this little 14 year old girl saying that Iraqis would go into hospitals and would, you know, and take babies and then smash their heads with boots. All, all this bullshit, all this bullshit, just, just sheer lies. She, you know, I mean, that's why people, when people, you know, when they, you know, when the media wants to get along and talk about all this Russia and, you know, and, you know, and Russia, Russia this and propaganda, and, man, please. The American propaganda machine is the most insidious propaganda machine ever invented. We don't need Russia to influence anything in our country. Fox News influences us. CNN influences us. NBC influences us. MSNBC. We don't, we don't need no damn Russia. What the hell is Russia going to do? You know, you know, we're, you know we, we, we've already spent, you know, we, we had a whole cold, a whole cold war. You know, in which we were literally, most Americans were scared and actually were like hiding under their goddamn, hiding under their school seats because they really thought that Russia was going to bomb us. America, the only damn country that's bombed, that's dropped a nuclear bomb on anybody. And, we, you know, Americans run around scared that Russia's going to do something to us. You know, just, just propaganda. But I digress. The, the first Iraq war was, you know, you know, it, it was some bullshit. So, you know, George Bush came along and said, okay, well, you know, what can I do to increase popular support? Ah, we'll find a black woman, you know, get a black woman, just like they did here in Atlanta. Got Gladys Knight with her raggedy ass waffles. So, you know, Gladys Knight, she ain't making money on them raggedy ass waffles no more, y'all. You know, them, them, them sweet potato, them sweet potato cheesecakes ain't kicking no more. You know, she ain't making, you know, ain't no more midnight train to Georgia no more, okay? So she has to remain relevant, you know, I didn't know Gladys Knight was still living. You know, I was surprised when I saw her. I was like, oh, damn, she's, you know, shit, you still living? You know, and she, you know, talking about she wants to, you know, uh, 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 take the, you know, take the controversy out the anthem and, you know, and, and, uh, and take the politics out the anthem. Since when has the anthem not been political? You know, since when has not been controversial? You know, the, the person who wrote the anthem was a slave owner who thought that blacks were inferior and should be sent back to Africa. So when the fuck was anthem not controversial? You know, when was it like, you know, like, uh, you know, a, a, a symbol of unity? It's, it's never been a symbol of unity. It's always been a symbol of white supremacy. Don't give me that no shit about no goddamn, you know, stop eating them goddamn sweet potato cheesecakes. Maybe you start to think clearly. I digress. So the rapper was bullshit. So Bush came along and said, okay, well, you know, we got to come up with a clever propaganda campaign to, you know, to, you know, to build up support for the Iraq war, for the Gulf Storm War, for Gulf, you know, Desert Operation Desert Storm, whatever. And he got Whitney Houston, you know, Whitney, you know, she, she uh, you know, she had a marvelous voice. I mean, she, she killed it. You know, I'll never forget watching documentary and white folks would love, they, white folks probably didn't know, know anything about Whitney Houston. But once they saw her perform that national anthem, you know, in Pasadena that year, where I think when the Cowboys played the, played the Bills, 
they were loving oh man i love some whitney houston she she's the best goddamn singer i, I love me some whitney and she just sang that national i mean she made me feel i mean people white folks are crying they were cry, they were crying y'all crying what a damn song crying they were, they were crying about this national anthem so yeah they, they selected the right person and then they did and then they did the military jet flyover that's all that was all you know that was all designed to build up support for the war that's all it was designed to do it was a form of militainment a really good documentary that you all should check out militainment it's it, it's the incorporating of the military as a form of entertainment as i just mentioned the nfl and there's no separating this you cannot separate this because the government finances all these stadiums all these sporting events they give billions of dollars uh to the nfl in the form of corporate welfare tax breaks and remember trump he was threatening to take all that shit away he was like man you don't get them son of bitches to stand for the anthem i'm gonna take away your welfare the nfl was like oh shit. well kaepernick i'm sorry but you got to go you took it you know they they they, they colluded against they colluded against him and made sure he never got a job again they colluded against him you know because again this is you know this is bread and circus this is government's bread and circus because you know government don't you know they're not give you medicare for all you know they're not gonna you know they're not gonna give you um you know anything that's beneficial that that's helpful for you they're not gonna give it to you you know they'll give you bread and circus they're not gonna give you medical marijuana they're not gonna give you medicare for all um you know they're not gonna give you like free food or you know or maternity leave or paternity leave you know anything beneficial for you they're not going to give you know but they'll give you bread and circus so you can kind of be distracted you know while right you know as we speak you know as as we're, as we're all watching the super bowl okay you know the american government's trying to overthrow somebody else's government while we were distracted about the shutdown the american government was trying to shut down the venezuelan government so that that's what these sporting events are all about they're they are they are a form of mindless entertainment and government distraction period that's all they are but that's why you know we we have this military jet flyover you know which again i mean i think the government i mean the government alone spends about about 20 million dollars you know so you not only have i mean the jets polluting the air um you know spraying all those toxic poisons into the air you have the noise pollution and then the government spending about 20 million 20 million dollars just on these military flyovers so not doing this for no reason y'all they're doing this as a form of propaganda and trump you know i mean you know we want to talk about trump you know he, he's against the deep state and all this all the all these trump supporters all this nonsense you know because he, he has like a cult like following just like obama trump has dropped more bombs than like obama and bush combined so he is just he is hell bent on expanding the American empire and the deep state, whatever you want to call it. You know, he, 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 he's a fraud. He, he's always been a fraud. He knows he's a fraud, you know, but truth be told, his resistance is a fraud too. So, you know, this next election is going to be, uh, you know, Trump's going to win by a landslide, um, you know, because his resist, he's a fraud, his resistance is a fraud. So he's going to call everybody else a fraud, and kind of, you know, so he's going to win again, you know, because he's a master of deception and, and deflection. I digress though. But yeah, so, you know, we just heard the military jets fly by live here in Atlanta, y'all, because that's that's what I'm doing this. You know, we're doing fuck the Super Bowl, fuck the NFL, fuck America, whatever. You know, hey, we're doing we're doing it all one night tonight. And we're going to have some fun, too. And p- please feel free to post your comments or questions. Um, but we're going to be talking, you know, we're going to have, have some fun. We're going to also, you know, talk about some issues. So I talk about the stadium now. You know, the title of this show is how the NFL is rigged. It's uh, imperialist and it's racist. So yeah, the NFL, it's, it's controlled by, um, by organized gambling. It's controlled by the mafia. Um, it's controlled by the leagues for ratings. It's controlled by the referees because the referees now, oftentimes they can have conflicts of interests. So there was, I think there was a recent story that came out about how Tom Brady was like hugging. And he was like, just hug, you know, he would have like a bromance with the referee like hey what's up bro you know man you know so, you know what's up man got you making america great hat oh you ain't, you, ain't, you don't have a magna hat oh man i have to order you one let, let me call my buddy trump you know he can get you a hat yeah so you know he was hugging you know just feeling on his booty you know just 
just all, all born a referee, you know, just buddy, buddy. And the referee turned out, actually, the referee who officiated, you know, I think when the, when the Patriots played the Chargers in the divisional playoffs, um, the referee actually worked for a law firm that actually is the project manager for the Gillette Stadium. So the, ref, so the referee would actually stand to financially gain by the Patriots winning, you know, even if they did it by cheating, you know, or by the referees not calling certain things against the Patriots. So the referees can very much oftentimes control the outcomes of these particular games, just as we saw, you know, in the Saints game against the Rams, you know, which I know Saint, you know, I've been seeing them goddamn billboards the past two weeks, you know, it was, the NFL blew it, you know, oh, the Saints fans are going, they're going crazy. They just, they are upset. I get it, but the NFL is rigged. So, you know, you know, they're going to continue to blow these calls. I don't care what the commissioner says. It's just, it's just, again, it's entertainment. It's not, it's not real. It's fake. So the stadiums, so the city of Atlanta, and I think the, you know, I think along with the state of Georgia spent close to about, uh, close to about a billion dollars on this stadium located in a starkly black neighborhood and was, was built by ethnically cleansing a black neighborhood known as, known as Lightning. There was a really, really interesting article you all should check out talking about the neighborhood of Lightning. I never even heard of this neighborhood. You know, I've been in Atlanta now. I'm not an Atlanta native. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I've been here, you know, maybe about the past 16 years. But, um, you know, uh, I had, you know, I researched a lot of things about Atlanta politics and, you know, land politics are bullshit. I've always known that, you know, they talk about, and we're going to talk about that too, you know, the politics of Atlanta. But um, I never knew about this neighborhood. I mean, I knew about gentrification, you know, because I never forget like um, Atlanta, when I first moved here, they were building um, <clears throat> an aquarium. I think, the, you, know, the, you know, it's so interesting because uh, Arthur Blank, you know, the pimp, I'm sorry, the, the, the slave owner, I'm, I'm sorry, my bad, y'all. The owner of the Falcons, <laughs> um, he actually used to own Home Depot. And I think the other co-founder of Home Depot, you know, he wanted to, you know, donate to the city and, you know, you know whatever. He wanted to donate to the city and, like, build, like, you know, spend, like, billions of dollars on, a, on animal prison. AKA an aquarium, you know, where, where big fucking whales, whales that, you know, been used to have, used to have the entire Pacific Ocean at their disposal are now in a fucking tank. You know, you know, you want to talk to me about animal cruelty, Michael, you know, come on, get out of here with that. Michael Vick and, you know, not that it's good to, to, to fight dogs. I mean, you get real, okay? Um, so, you know, he donated all this money to the city of Atlanta um, for them to build the aquarium. And I remember at the time, Shirley Franklin was the, was the mayor. And Atlanta, you know, they started pushing to criminalize the homeless because Atlanta has one of the biggest homeless populations in the country. They, I mean, it is a tremendous amount of homelessness in the city of Atlanta. As a matter of fact, the city of Atlanta right now has a housing crisis. We're literally, thousands of people are either being forced out of their homes, they're being evicted out of their homes, and you have millions of people that are living in hotels. As I speak right now, there's a housing crisis because rent's too damn high. People are being gentrified. The city is being gentrified and being ethnically cleansed. You know, Atlanta used to be 70% black. Now it's 50%. Now, I mean, literally, like in the course of less than 30 years, the city has gone from 70% black to like less than, you know, 40.999 and, and dropping. So, um, you know, but, you know, but I remember, you know, there's this big push, you know, and now it's because they, you know, they're about to build this new aquarium and the aquarium is going to be a big a tourist attraction. So, you know, the city wanted to kind of sanitize its homelessness population, its homelessness and wanted to like, it started arrest arresting homeless people. And I remember like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up, you know, because like, why are they doing, I mean, you know, the homeless people are there, you know, they're there because of structural poverty and structural inequality. So why are they just kind of, you know, you're not really solving the issue. You're just trying to, you're actually actually protecting these big businesses that benefit from Atlanta tourism. So I remember, you know, that was back in 2000, you know, when the city, you know, sought to, you know, just kind of, you know, not, not really fight homelessness by giving them a home. Oh my God, you know, like you want to give them a home? They just, you know, put them in jail, put them in, you know, shelters, you know, they, but they didn't fix this homelessness issue, which still continues to this day. And the city is doing it right now. My spouse, my wife just told me, she showed me an article 
about how the city, during Super Bowl week, they've been putting homeless people in jail. You know, because they don't want all those tourists, all those manga supporters, all those Patriot fans. Make America great. All those Patriots fans. Keep in mind now, Boston is the is America's most racist city. Most racist city up north, not down south, up north. And I'm from Philadelphia, and I can tell y'all, the racism up north is far more insidious than down south. They don't have Confederate flags up north, but them Irish and them Italians and all them other white settlers and immigrants, they do not like blacks. They hate them as a matter of practice, as a matter of principle. I've had, I've had friends of mine, you know, who their, their pregnant wives have been beaten. You know, a close friend of mine, his pregnant wife was beaten in Boston while she was pregnant. She was beaten by a white man. Beaten, she almost miscarried. Horrible attack. Boston is a very, you know, so, you know, so the Patriots owner, Trump supporter, Tom Brady, Trump supporter, you know, these, these manga supporters, they, they probably don't want to see all these, all these homeless folks we got in Atlanta, you know, they want to just have fun and drink and make America great and all sort of bullshit. So yeah, but the city, hey, they, you know, they support these Trump supporters, you know, hey, they come, you know, they, they're, they're here, they're here for vacation. They don't want to see all that homeless stuff. They don't, they don't want, they don't want to deal with that. And the city of Atlanta indulged them. So they've been putting homeless people in jail. So, but Lightning, this was a, a traditional black neighborhood and it was destroyed back in the early, I think 1970s or 80s in order to build the first Georgia Dome, which was actually built for the Olympics. Um, and an interesting history about Atlanta was that, you know, um, you know, Atlanta's had black leadership for the past almost 40 years now, you know, starting with Maynard Jackson, who the airport's named after. And we're gonna be talking about Maynard Jackson later on. Atlanta's had black political leadership. Um, and, you know, and during that time, you know, there's been a wholesale ethnic cleansing of the city of Atlanta during that time when they have black leadership. There's been racial attacks, you know, where literally hundreds of black people were killed mysteriously, including black children by the Klan, by the KKK. They went on a, they went on a real life purge kidnapping and killing and mutilating black children. We're going to talk about that. So, you know, so you ain't gonna hear all this bullshit, you know, you know, it's gonna be Travis Scott and Big Boy. You ain't gonna hear all this, to, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be like just propaganda are us. Okay, you're not gonna hear all these little hidden, you're not gonna hear all this. So I'm giving this to you, you know, straight up. Okay, so Atlanta, it's undergone an ethnic cleansing ever since, you know, we got our first, Atlanta got its first black mayor. And when Atlanta in 1988 was announced that it was going to host the Olympics, then it was a wrap. You know, literally, they shut. Atlanta was the first place to have public housing projects. They closed all the housing projects in the city. Um, you know, Techwood Homes, Herndon Homes, Bowen Homes, all these different housing segregated projects. You know, that were built. You know, for you know, of course, they, they were bad. You know, these 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 housing projects were bad. I mean, I'm not I'm not discounting that they were. They were, they were segregated units that were poorly built um, because most people don't know, but housing projects were actually designed to be like, a, to be a form of temporary housing. But what happened is that the government actually made them long-term housing. And then literally had, you know, all these poor blacks living in these areas of concentrated poverty. And then, and then they just abandoned those fucking housing projects, those housing projects. So they became, you know, just uh, vermin and, and filth infested um, they were underfunded. They were already in segregated neighborhoods. Uh, the units, the units and projects themselves were actually segregated. You know, I highly recommend everyone read the book Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. Color of Law, How Government Segregated America. Excellent book. Excellent book. It talks about Atlanta as well, too, how Atlanta, Atlanta literally had covenants that said whites can only live here, blacks can only live in these areas. So they had restrictive covenants that literally kept blacks out of, of, of certain neighborhoods and forced blacks into these uh, segregated, overcrowded, quote unquote, slums. So yeah, so essentially the, the government created the ghetto. They created the ghetto. And then they came around and said, oh man, look how bad, look how bad these folks are living. Look, look at them, look at all these welfare queens and, and super predators. So they, 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 they want to start using the coded language now. They want to start using the coded language welfare queens lazy 
super predators, you know, Ronald Reagan, and all these little, all, all these other white supremacists, Republicans and Democrats too. Let's not get it twisted, you know, because you saw that that Democrat up there in Virginia, you know, walking around with a black face on with a, with a Klan hood. You know, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's no difference between between the two parties. Let's not get it twisted. They're all one and the same. They're all team white supremacy. So, you know, they start using this coded language to demonize the residents. When the residents were, were when those neighborhoods were created to be areas of, of crime and dysfunction and poverty and, and inequality, they were created for those reasons. They were created to, to, to fail. So, you know, so now, oh, the government wants to destroy them. It's okay, but the problem is you're not, you're not, you're not getting to the root cause. You're not, you're not dealing with the structural racism. You're not dealing with inequality. You're not dealing with the segregation. You're not dealing with the concentrated poverty. You're not, you're not dealing with anything. You're just saying, okay, we're going to destroy the neighborhoods under the guise of giving people a better place to live. So that's what they did. City of Atlanta was the first to build up the housing projects and the first to destroy them. But it was really about ethnically cleansing the city, you know, for the Olympics and um, and for the Super Bowl. Um, and you know, and the Georgia Dome had this historic black neighborhood known as Lightning. Look up, look up. Um, you can check out the article. A really fascinating article. The neighborhood actually was home to a lot of civil rights workers, and you know, it, it, it was a neighborhood that was segregated, and it was a neighborhood that had a, um, you know, it was actually zoned for, you know, it was actually heavy, heavily polluted because of how it was zoned, you know. Which again, you know, getting into real estate and housing restrictions and housing just dis housing discrimination, but essentially the neighborhood was heavily polluted because you had railroads, you had um, chemical plants and coal coal firing power plants that were all located in within this neighborhood that just polluted the entire neighborhood you know so the city you know again it, you know so again the city kind of created the problem the government created the problem and then it came along and said oh man this neighborhood's so poor it's polluted it's it's crime infested we need to get rid of it so they knocked it down in order to build um the georgia dome you know the georgia dome is located in the two the, the two historic black neighborhoods and it is the two poorest neighborhoods in the southeastern United States. The two poorest neighborhoods in the South Vine City and I think um, English Avenue. The two poorest neighborhoods in the southeastern United States. Where the average income for a family of four is $30,000. But yet, right there in that Mercedes-Benz Stadium, they, if you want to get like a, a, a state, you want to get a seat with your name on it, it costs $30,000. In the city of Atlanta, in the state of Georgia gave, gave billions of dollars. They robbed the people to give, you know, the slave owner, Arthur Blank, billions of dollars to build his worthless stadium, which he pays no taxes on, no taxes. So who's the real goddamn welfare queen or king, whatever? Who's the real welfare queen? All these stadiums, they all publicly finance. They're all built, you know, in, in, in these bankrupt, usually black cities that have like no fucking money. But oh, when it comes time to build a stadium, you see, but they're not, you know, they see, but they're building these stadiums for a reason, y'all. You know, give them bread and circus and they will not revolt. Give them bread and circus and they will not revert. It is Robin Hood in reverse. They spend, they spend all these money on stadiums, all this money on Super Bowl, all this money on security. I've never seen so many goddamn uh, Georgia State Patrols in my life driving around the city this past week. Everywhere, just, you know, and of course, they're not, they're not fighting crime. They're not fighting, you know, the pedophile rings, you know, because Atlanta is the, it's the global capital of human trafficking. It's the global capital. You know, pimps in Georgia make about $20,000 a week. A week! So, you know, yeah, you know, a lot of times the police are a part of that little ring and they get paid by the pedophiles and by the you know, and by the, the pedophile traffickers and by the sex traffickers to protect, to protect their business. So a lot of times the, the cops are actually, you know, actually, you know, actually pimping out the women themselves or the kids themselves. That's another story. Um, but yeah, you know, they're not fighting, you know, they're, they're protecting Tom Brady. You know, make America great again, huh? The cheater. They're protecting Tom Brady. They're not, you know, they're not protecting residents. You know, I've never seen so many, I've never seen so many cops. AK-47s, M-16s, helicopters checking for radiation. You know, it's just, you know, and, I, and I'm like, you know, you know, didn't we fight like, what, like, you know, a 20-year war against Al-Qaeda? I, I haven't even heard the name Al-Qaeda 
I haven't even heard the name ISIS anymore. You know, because Trump, you know, he was he was gung ho on ISIS. I'm a bomb the shit out of ISIS. Where you know, ISIS ISIS located where? Where where is ISIS? Where do they come from? Where, 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 where the hell is ISIS? I'm a bomb. You know, you know, he ain't say he ain't say nothing about ISIS no more. It's all about you know you know just you know it's all about him you know deflecting and you know and how he carries out his little hindered agenda and you know people are hating on him and he's tweeting and you know but he ain't even talk about ISIS no more. You don't hear nothing about Al Qaeda no more. So. Well, you know what? What the hell would a terrorist, a so-called terrorist, want to do bombing the Super Bowl? I mean, why would he want to attack that? You know, so I mean, just I mean, just 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 complete and total fear mongering. You know, keep the people in fear so you can justify spending more money on the military and more money on the militarization of the police. You know, it just makes it makes makes no sense. So yeah, so the stadium, you know, it, it's it's that stadium over there has been built off of the backs of ethnic cleansing, the ethnic cleansing of an entire black historic neighborhood, including some of the oldest black historically black churches in Atlanta. I think Friendship Baptist Church, because I, I went to Clark Atlanta um, for grad school to get my MBA, and I remember you know doing some some lectures at um, Friendship Friendship Baptist Church. You know, it was like it was one of the oldest black churches in Atlanta. And yeah, you know, the, the city, you know, they pretty much told the church, hey, you know, uh, you know, take, 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 take this money or, you know, we're going to take, we're going to take your land, you know, because keep in mind that, you know, that, that's another thing that the cities do, you know, that, that's also in their back pocket that they can use eminent domain or government theft of your property. Because yeah, according to the constitution, you know, people will talk about how free America is according to the constitution, the government has the right to steal your property, even if you don't want them to. As long as it's used for a public, as long as it's for a public use, you know, but still, I mean, the public use could be building, you know, build, building a stadium and it could be, you know, it could be building a military base. It could be building a public school, but Hey, you know, if that's your land and you've lived there for generations, you know, and, and, and your, your ancestors, you know, in the case of, of friendship Baptist, your ancestors built that from the ground up, you were descendants of slaves you know, who built this safe sanctuary for black folks in the midst of Jim Crow and Klan terrorism. You know, you, you know, you built that. So black, you know, you built this for, for the hope to have the civil rights movement. Well, hey, you may not, you know, this is, a, this is sacred land. You might not want to sell that. Oh, but well, according to the constitution, the government has the right to steal your land. And, you know, and the government does. I think the, the Cowboys stadium that um, Jerry Jones built, they use eminent domain. That they stole people's land, you know, and when and when eminent domain's involved, then the government decides on how much your land is worth. So that's why the pretty much, I mean, Friendship Baptist didn't really have a church, didn't really have a choice. It was like, okay, well, either accept this offer the government's giving me, or it's gonna be, they're gonna like undervalue it, because when they use eminent domain, then if your property is worth a million dollars, the government's gonna come along and say, okay, well, we'll give you two hundred thousand, you know, okay, here's two hundred thousand, the land belongs to me now. Here's two hundred thousand my land so yeah i mean you know so essentially because of all these you know all these silly ass gladiator events atlanta's been ethnically cleansed atlanta's been ethnically cleansed so um, i mean i i haven't even gotten into nfl being racist you know we're gonna get into that but yeah you know we're talking tonight we're having a little discussion hope everyone's doing good uh you know if anyone has any questions or comments i'm gonna check the I haven't checked in a while you know because you know, I, I like to blabber on, so you know, I need to give my give my mouth a little break here. <laughs> I know I said a lot. Uh, I have ADHD. My mind, you know, you know, I have I'm a scatterbrain. So we go and check the comments. Anyone have any questions? Please feel free to post a question now. You know, I'll, I'll answer those briefly. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, you know, we we just you know just you know we're we're doing um, we're doing some anti Super Bowl, you know. Uh, 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 truth bombs here tonight. That's all, you know. I'm probably gonna hang out with some friends later, you know, and, you know, whatever, you know, see some friends I haven't seen in a while, but you know, I just figure I'll just build with y'all for a minute, chop it up, as they say, just have some fun. So let's see, anyone, no one, no one has no comments or questions. So awesome. So, okay. So, yeah, so, uh, man, I'm talking for about close to about an hour, so I'm actually going to end this here in a minute. Um, but, uh, anyways, so we're going to talk about the um, NFL. 
Now, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion about Kaepernick and, you know, and um, people are trying to stand with Kaepernick and, you know, NFL being racist. And yeah, and, you know, the NFL is, is, is totally racist. The NFL was essentially, you know, it, it's slavery. It's modern day slavery. That's all it is. You know, I think when they have, when they first draft the players, excuse me, uh, the players, um, you know, they, they're, you know, they're naked or like they're like, you know, like they're half dressed and they're forced like to appear like in front of a, you know, in front of like a bunch of scouts, you know, you know, it's eerily similar of like a slave auction, you know, and this is how, this, this is, this is the start of the NFL players like career, you know, and NFL is close to about 70% black. They have hardly any, any black coaches, no black quote unquote owners, totally dominated by white men. Um, you know, these owners love to love to regulate the hell out of their players, um, love to throw them under the bus. And, you know, and these black men are disposable, you know, you know, because NFL is a blood sport. It, it's probably it is the most dangerous sport um, on the planet. You know, that's why the average life expectancy of the NFL player is about the age of 55. You know, they 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 they, they live about about that about about 20 years less than the average American. And the NFL complete totally covers this up. They love to, you know, talk about, you know, player safety. I mean, but it's, you know, the whole dynamic, you know, you know, with the players being traded is, um, is, you know, is rooted in white supremacy and racism, you know, between, you know, the fact that, you know, you have all these white superheroes, AKA quarterbacks, you know, that, that command their black players down, you know, it's, and you have the white coaches that, you know, that tell the black bucks what to do. It's totally rooted in white supremacy. You know, it, it's so damn racist that, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's hard for people to see. And I have a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jeremiah uh, Kamara, Jeremiah Kamara. He has a, a, he has a YouTube channel called Slave Sermons, Slave Sermons, who talks about how um, the NFL is, is, is rooted, is, is, is a modern day form of slavery. So definitely check out that video. Um, but yeah, you know, essentially, you know, so when Kaepernick took a knee, you know, to protest racism and white supremacy, it was like, oh, they had to get rid of them. You know, just, just you know, of course, you know, you had the military factor and the NFL's military propaganda, but it's also, okay, well, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're white supremacists, you know, we can't have our black players just expressing themselves freely, you know, what they think this is, you know, they think it's a free country. No, this is a plantation. So yeah, so they had, they had, they had to shut them down. They had to shut them down, particularly given what he was standing for and that you know the nfl's largely racist white male fan base you know because it's mostly it's mostly i mean keep it real it's mostly you know racist white men watching this shit. just keeping it 100 you know this is you know this is uh you know this is black labor white wealth or black labor white entertainment you know you know nfl knew like you know we got we got we have to shut this down not only for our fan base but for us you know we can't have you know our players being free no nah, you know we can't have all these you know free you know, free black folks run around talking about, you know, they want to take a knee and police brutality and, you know, Amer America oppresses. Nah. Mm -mm. Nope. And once Trump got into the mix and started adding his two cents, his old, his, his old white supremacist, white nationalist ass, then it was a wrap. So the NFL had to completely shut them down. Yeah, but NFL, you know, you know, it, it, the NFL ain't shit. Football ain't shit. It, it's, it's extremely racist. And even more racist, the fact that, you know, black male bodies are disposable. Black men, I mean, just like during slavery, you know, you know, blacks would be kidnapped in Africa, brought over to New World, and would be, uh, you know, and would be put on plantations to die. And that's exactly what's happening with the NFL right now, as we speak. As millions of folks are watching the most popular, the most, tele, the most uh, popular sporting event, the most, uh, the most popular event as far as TV ratings in the country. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. So it, it is totally rooted in racism. And also, I forgot to mention, yeah, please feel free, y'all, you know, if you be so kind to donate, um, you know, you know, I'm doing this for free, but hey, if you feel in your heart to make a donation, you, I put a little link in the, in the box where you can click on the PayPal and make a donation of your choice for the information that I'm giving. Again, if you all have any questions, please feel free to, to post them, I mean, you know, um, you know, I was going to talk about health, but, you know, I'm kind of, I've already been talking for an hour. So, man, you know, I haven't even talked about the city of Atlanta. So, um, but yeah, please feel free to post your comments or questions uh, in, in the box. So, 
but yeah, and also um, please donate if you'd be so kind. So yeah, so yeah, it's totally rooted in racism. Now, let's you know, let's briefly talk about, and then you know, I mean, I gotta go. It's almost yeah, I've been on, on air for about an hour now. Let's briefly talk about the city of Atlanta, and no, well, actually, no, let's talk about um, let's talk about uh, yeah, let's talk about you know. Um, Let's talk about food, you know, because you know, I talk a lot about food. Let's talk about chemicals and that's in our food. So, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking the other day, you know, America, you know, America, you know, America is corny as shit. You know, we really are just, just corny. Like it's just, America is just corny. And you know the reason why we're so damn corny? It's because, you know, 80% of what we eat is corn, 80%. You know, so people talk about meat and, you know, meat is so bad and meat, 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 meat. You know, but it's actually, that's not where people, people not eating meat. People are eating corn. High, you know, people, literally today, they're eating corn chips, high fructose corn syrup, and corn fed beef. People talk to me about some damn meat causing disease. It's the corn. And all this corn is GMO. And the people that manufacture this corn, they are the ones that control the governments. Monsanto, ADM, Cargill. They're the ones that own all the politicians. They're the ones that own the government, period. So all this GMO corn reading, you know, it's, you know, it's dumbing us down. It's, you know, the corn syrup, is, the corn syrup is shrinking our brains because it's loaded with mercury and corn syrup naturally itself shrinks our brains. Um, you know, GMOs are shrinking our brains. And inter interestingly enough, so, you know, high fructose corn syrup is actually the number one cause of disease in the world. It's the number one consumed food in the in, you know in america um and like 80 percent of the food that we eat is made with corn or has corn derivatives in it and that's why corn is literally found in our dna so the corn fed meat causes heart disease the you know high fructose corn syrup causes diabetes and obesity and high blood pressure and all and the fact that we eat gmo corn causes about 53 different diseases and all this corn is made with a chemical known as atrazine. Some of you all may have heard about that. Atrazine is a homosexuality chemical. It's a homosexuality chemical that causes uh, frogs to be transgendered. It causes frogs to be, um, you know, or transsexual rather. You know, uh, it causes frogs to be homosexuals. It makes, um, you know, according to studies, it makes men's penises smaller. So literally all this corn they're eating is used for population control. And all the corn, even, even if it's non-GMO corn, is sprayed with atrazine. Atrazine is the number one chemical used around the world right after Roundup, which is made by Monsanto. And the company that makes atrazine is a pharmaceutical company. It was a spinoff of Syngenta. I'm sorry, a spinoff of Novartis. The company's name is Syngenta. But they make a, the atrazine is extremely toxic. So think about that. You know, think about that. You know, think about that in terms of the elites and these eugenicists. So they got the whole, they got all the American population, really, really the whole world, hooked on corn. That's GMO. And you know, and these elites want population control. So you know, we're all eating this. We're all eating this food that contains homosexuality chemicals and chemicals that sterilize us and causes women to you know not have periods. It makes them have fibroids and endometriosis and PCOS. So the chemical sterilizes men and women, makes men have small penises, suppresses their sperm counts, and turns them into homosexuals. And this is the number one consumed food in the world. Ooh. That's what you call a strategy of chemical warfare, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you call population control. That's what you call eugenics. So. Just wanted to add that, you know, because, you know, people eating all this toxic food for the Super Bowl, you know, you know, all, you know, all, you know, all this, drinking all this beer, you know, which again, no, loaded with estrogen via the hops, all these chemicals, all these chemicals in the land of the free. And it needs to be, I mean, atrazine is found in 94% of our drinking water, 94% according to the USDA. 94% of our drinking water has atrazine in it. And you cannot filter it out. And the chemical never breaks down. So it's here until infinity. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I tell you, you know, these corporations are something else. These corporations are something else. But yes, you know, my, 
time. I'm running out of time. I just wanted to, you know, just uh, do a quick little video. Um, I'm I may do another video on YouTube. I need to probably grab something to eat and get some water. You know, my throat. You know, I just need to drink some more water. Throat's a little hoarse. Um, me, 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 me. So yeah, it's a little hoarse. So you know, I'll probably I'll post when I go on YouTube. I may do a part two. We'll see. See how I feel. Talking about you know a hidden history of Atlanta. I may do that you know later on. But thank you for tuning in. If you know you'd be so all the kind 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 enough to donate, please do. Hopefully you all gain some benefit from this um, from this lecture. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your night. Be safe. Um, don't drink too much. Try to avoid the corn. <laughs> um, you know. And um, you know, be safe out there. Join the rest of your join the rest of your week, and definitely tune in to tune in to me here. I'm going to do more Facebook Live videos. I'm trying to like do simulcast on YouTube and Facebook Live. I just need to figure it out how to do it. Um, but you know, thank you again for tuning in, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your night. Peace.